Hi, I'm Cameron and this is Cam's Coffee Corner. Let's see our question of the day. Good morning and welcome to another episode of Cam's Coffee Corner. So today we're going to be talking about this subject of wounds. And this is a subject I'm particularly excited to talk about because there have been many times in my life where I have felt wounded or different friends or family of mine have felt wounded and the impact of a wound changes people. And I always say the statement that hurt people hurt people. And by meaning that is that when you are hurt, you end up hurting others, whether intentionally or unintentionally, we don't think about our actions once we've been wounded because we're so focused on the pain that we feel. Now, before I dive a little deeper into this, we're going to open up in prayer. Lord, I thank you that you are a good God, that this is a day you have made, that we can rejoice and be glad in it, that we can open our hearts to hear what you are saying to us, that you are drawing us nearer to our destiny, that you are calling us into a relationship of deeper intimacy. I thank you that we can answer that call. And I thank you that as we go throughout our day, that you continue to guard and protect us that you are looking out for our best interest, that you want us to succeed in the plans that you have for us. I thank you, Lord, that as we search your scripture and your word, that we just understand a deeper side of you. I pray that it's not my words spoken, but your words, and that what you want spoken to your people is what comes across. We thank you, Lord, for everything you are doing in and through our lives for your glory, for your kingdom. And it's in your name we pray, amen. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start diving into the message. And for today's devotional, I typically will break down wounds into three different categories. Wounds that are inflicted on you, wounds that we inflict on others, and wounds that are self-inflicted. I wanna talk to you about how God desires to create a restoration in you, a healing within you. God doesn't desire that we come broken and beaten and just keep coming that way to him repeatedly. God desires us to be restored, to be healed. He is a good father. And just like any good father wants their child well and whole, our father wants us well and whole. He didn't send his son into the world to condemn it, but through him, the world might be saved. And a good father wants their children well. They don't want them limping around with a broken leg being like, yep, you kind of had that coming. No, God desires a deep restoration in us. And if you look through the gospels, you see that there are the best manuals on healing, best books, best studies on healing, because you constantly see healing miracles and restoration of people. You see throughout it, that it's filled with physical, emotional, and spiritual healing for individuals. So we know that in God's word, that healing is desired, that it is his plan, it was his purpose. I mean, even our bodies heal by themselves through the natural processes. If God didn't want us to be healed, he could have just changed the way we were made. So it's a good thing that we know that our God loves us and he wants us whole. Now, Another reason I want to talk about wounds is that this generation and this day and age, we have more people suffering from depression, from levels of anxiety, from this high suicide rates and just overwhelming numbers of oppression. And just and so we see that there's this unbearable pain and we see that the church on whole is carrying this weight. And even just people in our world are carrying this weight that they were never intended to carry. But the thing is, that whether it's a wound to your body or wound to your soul, wounds left untreated can be fatal. And we see so many people who take their lives and it's saddening to see. Boris Becker, after winning Wimbledon for the second time, was asked what, like, was interviewed and he said his biggest temptation was to not commit suicide. I mean, you see people with overwhelming success reach these heights and then they're still depressed. Or you see people who are struggling under a mountain of debt and weight that just feel it's too much for them. Or you see people that just feel like they've let so many people down. And so we see all these people from different backgrounds, different perspectives, different socioeconomic statuses, different political statuses, different ethnic statuses, and all of them are still suffering from the same problem. And it's just a weight that they weren't meant to bear. 
in Matthew eleven twenty eight through 30 says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, isn't that a wonderful thing just to know that God desires us to come to him when we feel weary or heavy laden, that he's not like, look, take care of that yourself. You already throw so much on me. No, he says, come to me. And I want to clarify that when I'm talking about a wound, I'm not talking about a physical external wound. When you think of getting a gash on your arm, that's a physical external wound. And yes, those can be very devastating, especially for people who have lost limbs and those can create emotional wounds, but I'm talking about the emotional wounds, the spiritual wounds, the wounds that go deeper, that leave you broken and hurt in your mind, that an injury affects the way that you think, you trust, you love, how you reach out, how you seek comfort, how you look for counsel. That's the type of wound I'm talking about. And in Galatians 6, 2 through 5, this is what it says about burdens and weights and these are where we get our wounds and it says bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of christ and if anyone thinks to himself to be something when he is nothing he deceives himself but let each one examine his own work and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another for each one shall bear his own load now it's interesting because let me define a burden as well for you. I defined what a wound is, and let me define what a burden is. A burden is anything in excess weight. Um, if you guys play video games, there are sometimes video games where you're allowed to have a certain carrying capacity or amount of weight you're able to carry on your person's individual. And once you carry more than your character is allowed to, it'll often say something like, you are over encumbered, which means that you are carrying more weight than you were ever meant to. Burdens are weights that we weren't meant to carry. However, if you notice at the end of uh, verse five, it says, for each one shall bear his own load. There are weights we are meant to carry in life, but these are our own responsibilities. But sometimes there are wounds inflicted on us that we weren't meant to carry, but we hold on to that thing like it is a precious, valuable family heirloom. We don't want to let go of that wound because it's how we've wrapped our identity. It's how we've defined ourselves. But God never meant for us to define ourselves through a wound or, an, or identify with a burden. The one thing I want to encourage you is if you feel like you are heavy and weighed down and have this burden and it's inflicting this painful wound, Find someone in your inner circle. Find someone that you can trust. Find counsel that you can trust. Not someone who's just going to wallow with you in pity because there is a time to sit with someone in pain, but there's also a time for them to speak truth, to speak love, to speak encouragement. And it's often been said that the best thing that Job's friends did for him were just be silent the first seven days because once they started trying to speak wise counsel and offer advice, they ended up being wrong. But we want to find people that are seeking God's counsel and giving God's advice and showing his love in those times. The Bible says, do not forsake the assembly of one another together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another or encouraging one another. We as human beings are meant to be social creatures. We're meant to encourage one another and live in fellowship. If we weren't meant to, the Bible wouldn't continually have verses that talk about fellowship. Uh, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. We are meant to be in community and fellowship with one another. So wounds are often the bricks with which we build our walls. Now let me say that again. Wounds are often the bricks with which we build our walls. So we have people wound us by things they say or things they do, whether it's someone ran out on you and abandoned you, we put that brick there and we start building bricks of a fence like that have been built around that. Well, my father abandoned me and my mother abandoned me and my friends are abandoned me and you're going to abandon me because everyone in my life has ended up abandoning me. So I'm going to build this wall and I'm going to wall people out because I don't want to be offended anymore. And if I just create this wall around me, I can't get hurt. And we build these walls continually to block people out. And oftentimes these walls get so massive that we don't let anyone in emotionally and we don't let God in spiritually because we can't just control how this wall works. See, 
we are meant to have boundaries. God is a God of boundaries, and he's very clear about his boundaries, and we are meant to have boundaries. But when we build these brick walls to isolate ourselves in, we block out everything that is bad, but also everything that is good. But the great thing about God is he is patient, and he is loving, and he desires to break down these walls. But God's not going to do it by himself. He's not a bully. He's a gentleman, and he wants you to help him. So he will start taking it down brick by brick and you have to help him brick by brick. And sometimes this is done through professional counseling. There are sometimes wounds that are so heavily inflicted on us that our friends and our family don't have the knowledge or skill to deal with these issues. And so we find professional help. A lot of times it's found through pastors or spiritual advisors in our lives and we find guidance and counseling through them. Sometimes it's through our friends and family, and a lot of times it's through just seeking God and his word uh, as you read each day and in prayer. One of my favorite passages in the Bible is 1 Kings 19. And the reason why is we've just seen this amazing showdown on Mount Carmel. And so it's this epic scene just a chapter earlier in chapter 18 where the prophets of Baal and Asherah are trying to get their God, their false God, to come and take up the sacrifice by fire. And they're offering praises and they're cutting themselves, trying to bring out this great being to do something and nothing happens. And Elijah actually mocks them during this time, saying like, oh, where is he? Maybe he can't hear you. Shout a little louder and nothing's happening. But finally, they give up and Elijah offers a prayer unto God and he answers by fire, consumes the sacrifice. Everyone that is watching bows down in reverence to the real God in heaven and on earth. And so this big victory has been won for God and Elijah has been the prophet that was there to deliver it. And after this, he gets a letter from the king's wife who the king was there witnessing all this and has seen this amazing marvel. And he gets this letter from the wife and she says, far be it from me if by tomorrow you are not dead. And so Elijah just reads this letter and he runs. Like he's just sure had God show up in a supernatural way, but he runs out of fear and he despairs and he gives up and he's afraid for his life and doesn't understand why he's doing any of this. And in 1 Kings 19 verses seven through eight, we see him at his vulnerable. We see him at his most honest. And an angel comes and ministers to him. And it says, at verse seven, and the angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, arise and eat because the journey is too great for you. So he arose and ate and drank and he went in strength of the food 40 days and 40 nights as far as Oreb, the mountain of God. Now I love it because it says, arise and eat because the journey is too great for you. Life is a journey. Our walk with God is a journey. It's far too great for any one of us. And that's why we have God. We have the spirit of God living on the inside of us. We have friends, family, spiritual advisors, mentors, counselors, all of these people around us to walk this journey together. The journey is too great for any one of us. And so we have God. In Isaiah 56, five, it says, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement, for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. We are healed. And so Jesus bore on that cross all sicknesses, all disease, all pain, all wounds for us to be made whole. And sometimes in life we feel like we have hardened our hearts far too much for anything to get through. But I love Ezekiel 36, 26, because it's God talking at a different time to a different people, but it still applies for us today. And it says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take a heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. See, if God did something long ago, he can still do today. He can take the hardest of hearts and put a heart of flesh, a gentle heart, a loving heart, a heart that doesn't feel this wound, this pain, that a heart that can trust again. And we can take comfort that we quote this verse out of Romans 8 and we love it and we still never fully understand it because we can never fully understand God. But it says, we know that in all things, God works to the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. God is working for us. 
He is making all things turn out for good. Yes, we have been wounded, but my wounds in my life that I have endured have often been my greatest testimonies for God. It is the place where I've been able to minister the most and help other people. Yes, I have been wounded a lot. I have been wounded physically. I've been wounded emotionally. But each time you can go to God and there is restoration and healing. And he is there like the uh, father from the story of the prodigal son who rushes out joyfully to meet his children. He desires to take us in. He desires to nurse us and bring us back to full health. When we submit ourselves to him, God is eager to take us in and he wants to make us whole. So I want to encourage you, if you're in pain today, from whether it is a wound that someone else inflicted on you and you're feeling all these things and you've built up these walls, or maybe it's a wound that you've inflicted on another and you're realizing now that the thing you have said or the thing that you have done could have hurt someone so badly, or maybe it's a wound that you've inflicted on yourself because you've believed these lies constantly that people have said, or you've decided that you weren't worthy and so you've started hurting yourself. I wanna encourage you to stop, take a moment, and let's pray to God. Lord, we thank you that you are a good God, that you are a God that loves us first and foremost. When others may not love us or we don't feel loved or we don't feel accepted, that you love and accept us. Lord, right now we offer our hearts to you. They have been wounded, they have been hurt, they have been broken, but we know that you are a God who can mend. You can mend our hearts back together. And if we have a heart of stone, you can take it and give us a heart of flesh. You can work within us an amazing wonder. We thank you, Lord, that as we submit ourselves to you, our hearts to you, and we seek your counsel, your wisdom, we know that you say, if anyone lacks wisdom, to let him ask of you, and he will give generously without reproach. You will not rebuke us from seeking your wisdom. We pray that you put people in our lives that can encourage us in the ways of God. We pray that you... Just heal us from the most inward parts that we can grow emotionally, that we can grow spiritually, and we can grow physically into a greater stature that we may better serve you. We thank you that we offer up all this pain knowing that you take it, that you will bear our burdens, that you will take this yoke and you will break that yoke and you will give us a new hope, a new future, one that is surrounded by you that is fixated on your purpose. We thank you, Lord, for your love and your restoration. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Well, y'all, I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I will see you next week. Goodbye.